So we're going to do a little bit of a case today. We have our patient here, and we have his permission to videotape this and talk about his condition. He's presenting with a plantar fasciitis. This is going to be his third treatment with us. Essentially, he's presenting with various stereotypical signs and symptoms, pain located right here at the attachment site for the plantar fascia, um, typically coming with first step out of bed in the morning. So after being in a non-weight bearing position for a prolonged period of time, tends to work itself out as the day progresses. So one of the key things that we're doing with this treatment as we are going to address all the fascial tissue on the plantar surface of the foot. We are also going to address the muscular tissue deep to the plantar fascia, like our flexor digitorum brevis muscle. We're going to do some cross fiber frictions at the attachment site at the calcaneus. We're also going to be working on the posterior leg, so the muscles at the back of the leg, because um, those typically present as tight as well. So I'll get a different couple different angles for you guys once we get the treatment going. So I want to show you guys a little bit of the range of motion difference from the effect side to the unaffected so this over here is his left um, leg his left foot and ankle and the other side obviously his his right side we're gonna see as he dorsiflexes his ankle so if you can bring your foot up like this towards your face on both sides and go as high as you can for me we can see how this side here the unaffected side has a much larger range of motion in comparison to the affected side so part of what we're going to do here again is treating the posterior muscles of the leg so the muscles of the calf um, to reduce some of the tension here and restore some of that range of motion so one of the treatment approaches that we're going to utilize are cups these are going to be um, dry cupping so we have our plastic cups that are going to be placed over the uh, medial gastrocnemius muscle belly, the lateral gastrocnemius muscle belly. We've got one right down here at their tendinous attachment where it becomes our long Achilles tendon. So this is going to be our, one of our first areas of placement. You can see here, I'm just kind of moving the cups around to address the uh, soft tissue fascia layer to loosen it up a little bit before we get in there with our hands. So right now we have our patient with our cups on doing some active resisted movements. So you can't really see this. Actually, maybe I'll pan this down. I've got his foot right against my thigh and we have him plantar flexing, engaging our posterior muscles, causing the muscular tissue to slide and move very fluidly underneath the superficial fascial layer as the cups work their mat. So we're doing some soft tissue work right now to our posterior, our superficial posterior compartment. So our gastrocnemius and our soleus primarily. So right now we're just doing a little bit of work to the lateral head of our gastrocnemius muscle. We'll move that over to the medial head and then also hit in through our soleus, which is going to sit deep to our gastrocnemius. So here we're just going to do a passive force stretch for his soleus muscle. And we're also going to do a passive force stretch for his gastrocnemius. In this case here, we want to have the knee in a fully extended position while we passively dorsiflex the ankle. So we can see we also have some cups placed on the plantar surface of the foot to address the tightness in the plantar fascia. So we're going to move around the cups a little bit, try to create a little bit of a stretch to the soft tissue of the plantar surface. So we're just going to work through the soft tissue of the plantar surface in this prone position before we turn him into supine to do the same thing in a slightly different position. When he's in supine or he's lying down on his back, we're going to be able to dorsiflex the ankle and extend the digits, which will allow us to get deeper into the soft tissue of the plantar surface of the foot. So again, we're holding the ankle into a dorsiflex position, as well as extending digits one through five to create a stretch through the plantar surface of the foot as I do some soft tissue work through the plantar fascia, which is significantly more pliable than uh, the previous times we had seen him, which lets us know that we are making great progress as well subjectively. He states a significant reduction in discomfort. And to his credit, he's also been doing his home care exercises consisting of stretching in some self-care soft tissue work. 
Another thing we want to do for this condition is something called cross fiber frictions. It's a technique that you're going to use. It's relatively deep. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Nonetheless, this is going to be significant in reducing the discomfort associated with this condition. So again, we're going to have the foot in this dorsiflex position. So he's pointing his toes out towards his face or passively I'm doing it for him. I'm also going to extend the digits like this. So that's the position that I want at the ankle. I'm going to palpate for the proper area right at the calcaneus and then I'm going to do my cross fiber type of work. So this is going to be a technique where I'm going back and forth right at the attachment site of the fascial band, the plantar fascia. Another part of our treatment approach is going to be to mobilize the talocrural joint to the ankle joint to allow for an increased range of motion with that dorsiflex position. So in this case here, we are going to be performing a posterior glide at the ankle joint. We're doing this at a relatively high grade. So right now I'm doing a grade three oscillation. And again, we're going to do a little bit more stretching to the posterior compartment and I just want our patient to relax his legs so don't help me so we've just done some soft tissue work and we want to see that range of motion to see if we have any improvements in it so I'm gonna have you bring your feet up towards your face again and if you guys remember from the first videos we saw we saw this right side having a significant increase in range of motion compared to our affected side and right now we can see that they're both pretty much at the same range. I call that improvement. Post-treatment wrap-up, how's your foot feel? Feels fantastic. Tell them how your foot fucking feels. Feels fantastic right now. I gotta cut that fuck out, eh? Shit.